Hello. Hi. Hi. All right. Everyone can hear me. That's nice. Welcome to Guys One Saudi Arabia. Yeah. you guys. Um, first and foremost, please give a big round of applause in thanking all those lovely people who helped contribute to organizing this event. Yeah. And uh, please also join me in uh, welcoming uh, Saudi Aram Aramco company that are our guests. They are our guests here today. Let's give them a round of applause. Alright, excited guys? Are you excited? Okay, that's better. I'm excited as well. Assalamu alaikum. First of all, thank you all for coming today and special thanks to the professors and our special guest coming all the way from Saudi Arabia. I'd like to welcome you all to Kaist One Saudi Arabia. Uh, we're going to take you to our journey, to our country. We'll be talking briefly about our history, demographics, culture, and our future. But before all that, we went around the campus asking random students about the first things pop to their mind when they think about Saudi Arabia, whether they know the, ca the capital of it, and if they have anything to add, basically. Let's see how did it go. Really rich person of a boy. Yeah. Actually, I really don't know about Saudi Arabia. I know that Saudi Arabia has many oils, <laughs> many money. Oh yeah. <laughs> a lot of oil. Maybe uh, rich people. He was wearing some, oh, what's it called? Like, I know that it's illegal to drink alcohol. Is it allowed for girls, like for women to, uh, like to drive? Yes, they do. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no, I don't. <laughs> I forgot his name, but I knew it. <laughs> Uh, Eminence? Is it Eminence? <laughs> uh, if I hear Saudi Arabia, I don't think Dubai, you know? It's like a skyscraper. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Well, as you have seen, like, so far we've had 10 oil and money answers. <laughs> well, the truth is, like, Saudi Arabia is like any other country. We have all the classes in it. Rich, middle, and uh, poor class. Uh, also, we have some correct and great answers, by the way, but we've decided to leave it to our presenters today to speak about. And at the start, uh, my friend Abdul Karim will talk about our history. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Hello, everyone. I want to like to welcome you. And you want to say, oh, alaikum. Uh, to start with, today I will talk about the history of Saudi Arabia land. The land where Saudi Arabia... Today I will talk about the history of the land. Actually, actually Saudi Arabia was not born 100 years ago or 200 or 300 years ago. This land dates back to a very, very ancient time. And this land is actually known as the cradle of civilization. The civilization that were great. The civilization that helped to change the whole history and reshape the history of the world that we are living here now. So, today I will talk about some of these civilizations. To start with, I will talk about 
the, his, the kingdom of Nabataeans. Actually, this kingdom was in Saudi Arabia. It, 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 it is in the northern part of the modern Saudi Arabia. It, it dates back to 3000s before the coming era, and they spoke the Semitic language. And what was great about this civilization is that they were famous in sculpture. They used to sculpt their houses and buildings by their, ha by their hands. And you can see how beautiful, how beautiful their buildings from the picture. Just look at the picture, you can see how beautiful it is. And the second civilization I will talk about today is actually the Kinda civilization. The Kinda civilization was a great kingdom, and it dates back to the fourth century before the coming era. And actually, they, they had a strong economy, and their strong economy was due to the trading. Actually, they are the first civilization known of creating shopping districts, what is known in these days as malls. So actually, malls existed for, in the fourth century before the coming era. The third civilization I'm going to be talking about is the Islamic civilization, the great Islamic civilization. When Muhammad, peace be upon him, was born in the seventh century, the Islamic civilization existed and started to the whole world, actually. It wasn't just in the Middle East. It has stretched to the whole world, actually. In that time, it was the biggest empire in the whole world, actually. And the impact of the Islamic civilization on the individual Muslims was great. And actually, I will talk about some of the Muslims who contributed and reshaped the whole world. To start with, I will talk about this great woman whose name is Fatima al-Fahriya al Qurashi. Al Do you know what she did? Actually, she created the first university in the whole world. University that a world students a, a degree in different majors. And the university was the University of al qayrawaniyya And she is originally from Mecca. And also, the Islamic civilization has impacted many scientists, uh, many Muslim scientists. One of them actually is Ibn al-Haytham. Ibn al-Haytham created one of the greatest things we are, now, we are now dealing with it. Actually, scientists go through steps when they do their experiments. And actually, the first one who invented the science, the scientific way, was Ibn al -Hayn. The last one I'm going to be talking about, actually, who was a revolution in the field of mathematics, is al khwarizmi actually, who was also impacted by the Islamic civilization that was born in Mecca. al khwarizmi has many, or had many contributions in the world history. He created algebra, algorithms, and many great science. So, he reshaped the world in terms of mathematics. And this is my time. I'll leave you with my friend Walid. He'll talk to you about the kingdom history and the history of the kings. Thank you so much. So after all this greatness and glory of the Islamic civilization, we witness something that repeats itself uh, in all history. After we reach the pinnacle of the civilization, we reach a point where we decline and we witness the demise and fall of the Islamic civilization or the golden ages of the Islamic civilization. We reach a point where people fight only to survive. Education, unhealed. And then came this Shahada of Mot. It was the driving force between the family of of the house of al Sarud, who joined hands with a famous clerk, a scholar, Muslim scholar, Muhammad bin Abdul Wahab, to establish the first Saudi state, and then the second, and today we live in the third Saudi state, established and founded by the, by the founding father of the kingdom, King Abdul Aziz. And actually, I will leave you to watch this short clip that pictures the state back then. Don't come here, you're all right. Don't come here. 
يخويين اي عندهم الخضار عندهم الفار هذا من بليس حنا اتفقنا انكم ما تورودوا لا الماء انتم ولا حلالكم <تصفيق> بس الحلال اذبحها انظمه خفنا عليها من الموت Unification, you were transformed entirely. This is also a photo of the king, of the, of the late King Abdelaziz, with the late President Roosevelt, establishing the kingdom outreach uh, friendship uh, across the world. This is also another photo. Now, something exciting happened only six years after the foundation of the kingdom. A great discovery that it changed the course of history of the Arabic. Uh, of course, I think you already know what the discovery was. Well, the discovery of petroleum. Mark the day, the 3rd of March, 1938. This is also the second king of the kingdom, King Saud bin Abdul Aziz, who walked and continued his father's walk in establishing great relations with the, found with the neighboring states and also the world. This is the third king, King Faisal bin Abdul Aziz, uh, with, with President Reagan. He's actually famous for modernizing the country, introducing TV and radio for the first time. He actually was chosen as the man of the year uh, for his outstanding relentless defending of the both Islamic and Arabic worlds. This is the king that came after him, King Khalid. Uh, you see him standing beside the Iron Lady, the Prime Minister at the time, Mahmoud Taj. His reign, we see prosperity in the kingdom. Wealth actually increased in the kingdom and his reign is characterized by stabilizing the, the, the atmosphere. 
After him came King Fahd, the longest reigning monarch of the kingdom, who is actually the first prime minister, of, the first minister of education. He was responsible for uh, expanding the education uh, field in the kingdom, making schools reach uh, to all areas of the kingdom. Uh, and, and, and this is actually a sketch of the second holiest site in, this, in Islam, the Prophet's Mosque in Al-Madinah. This sketch was actually uh, sketched right before the establishment of the kingdom. And I delayed this point because this, you will see this trend almost in all the monarchs and the kings of the, of the kingdom of Saudi Arabia. From this, this is actually a picture of the mosque right before establishing and founding the kingdom. Now, King Fahd and all of his brothers and the family worked relentlessly to establish the kingdom as the beating heart of the Islamic world. We actually take pride in transforming this to this. Ten times bigger than the previous mosque. And this, the first holiest site in Islam, to this. Then came King Abdullah. Now, of course, you understand the time limitation here. I, I can't speak about everything and the deeds they did. So I'll, I'll only mention this. When he took control of the kingdom, when he was crowned as, as king, there were only three universities in the kingdom. And after he died, uh, there was 27 universities around the kingdom. And this is the current king, King Salman bin Abdul Aziz. Uh, uh, yeah, He's actually responsible for reshuffling the whole government of the king and modernizing the king. And the engineer behind this modernization is actually his crown prince, uh, Prince Mohammed bin Salman. And actually my colleagues will talk to you a little bit about his vision and his modernization of the king. With this, my friends, I leave you. And he's actually chosen by the people as, as man of the year by the Times Magazine in 2000. Okay, this was fun. I leave you with my colleague, Anas, who will talk to you about our democratics. Thank you. So, great things said on our history. Now, I will just give you a brief uh, about our demographic and, demo uh, and geographic of Saudi Arabia. As you all know, Saudi Arabia is located in the Middle East. This is the location of Saudi Arabia. The official name of Saudi Arabia is the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. The capital of Saudi Arabia is Riyadh. And the official language spoken by people is Arabic. We will go through several Arabic phrases. For this comparison, I want to show the difference between the, the area of Saudi Arabia and Korea to show you that in Saudi Arabia and the population also. So in Saudi Arabia, we don't see places like the ones we see in Seoul, like Itawan or Myeongdong, where there are so many people. Like the population is spread out more. So you don't see the things that we see here. The currency, of course, is Saudi Riyadh. Now I will go uh, through the geography. We're bordered by seven countries, Jordan, Iraq, Kuwait, Bahrain, Qatar, United Arab Emirates, Oman, and Yemen and to uh, water the Red Sea and the Persian Gulf, or the Arabian Gulf. Of course, the Saudi land has gone through many uh, geological cycles. We have so many different geographic places. We have the deserts, and not only hot deserts, we, hope, we also have snow. Many people think that Saudi Arabia is only, only have hot weather, but it's not true. Here's uh, another picture. This is the main tool of transportation back in the days. It's called the shipment of, uh, the ship of the desert, the camel. And this is a recent picture taken from the empty quarter, the largest uh, contiguous uh, desert in the world. This is a close picture after a rain, after a storm. We can see a beautiful picture. The water is going through the sand hills. Also, we have mountains and islands. 
Now I will go uh, briefly on the Arabic language. Arabic language is considered one of the most hardest languages in the world. It's very confusing that we start from right to left instead of left to right. Also, Arabic language is considered a very descriptive language. For instance, for the camel itself, we have 100, 100 words to describe the camel. For the camel that is frightened from things, the camel that is always ahead of the other camel, so it's very descriptive language. For the time sake, I'll go through several ones. The first one is Hala, we use it to, to greet people. Another one is Iwa, or E, it depends on the region you come from. It means yes. Another one, yalla, let's go. <laughs> and hello, which means when you like something, you say hello. And last one is shukran. Maybe many of you know about it. It's called shukran. So let's try all saying the word shukran together. One, two, three, say it. <laughs> okay, that's for my part. Now, I will leave you with Fawaz for the culture part. I don't need a script. <laughs> Thank you, Anas, for this delegate uh, explanation about our uh, demography. Now, moving on to our traditions. Let me start with the way we clothe, or the way we dress. In the past, this is how we wear. A long dress, white, called thob. And on top of our head, we wear a headdress called shmar, which is this one. Also, we have something to place it. We have it, we call it a gal, which is an accessory, a black one. Through time, we wanted to develop, develop it more, so, it's be, so can it become more urban? So we dress like this, a colored one, especially during winter. Moving on to the next part. We want to be more prestige, more fancy. <laughs> We're gonna wear bisht, and special on special occasions. So this is like the whole package. <laughs> Let me go to women's side. Oh yeah. <laughs> of course, women when they leave home, they wear a baya, as we can see here. <laughs> okay, but they have the choice to cover their faces or not. Moving on to something very important in every person's life, marriage. I know all of you guys want to be married, and someday. Ah, ah, oh, ah, I see. <laughs> I see you there. <laughs> Special case, guys. <laughs> all right. So in marriage in Saudi, it goes actually by two ways. By love, which we all know. But however, there's a traditional way that we actually go by it, and we emphasize it the more. Which is the traditional way. I said twice, right? <laughs> I see you. <laughs> so getting. <laughs> all right then. So when it, when it all starts when the groom is ready to be married, he tells him his mom, Mom, search for me a girl. She will use her connections to search for him. And also, really guys, it's not, it's not a joke. But after that, after the, after the family actually meet together, the bride can see the groom for the first time. We call it in Arabic, Shofa al-Shariya. And from that point, it's the green line and the green sign to go or to refuse for the bride. So after she actually say yes, let's get engaged. We, are, we have to settle a small ceremony that identify that these two couples are engaged. But what comes after that is step two, the most important one, which, which, which we call it Milka, where everything has become so official. The two families gather together for a ceremony and write the marriage contract. However, they don't move in yet together. But they can date. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on to the huge one, which is Farah, or we call it also another synonym, Zawad. Oh my god, how can I explain it like this? It's when it's gonna come to the whole family together and to celebrate these two couple married. So as we can see here, the groom is back, the groom is accompanied by his relatives 
and his brothers, or his friends, sorry. This is the departure of the groom to the wedding halls. Yeah, we like it fancy. <laughs> All right, this departure is going actually to be to two wedding halls separately for men and women. We don't mix. Here we can see the groom is actually welcomed by the wife the wife family. He welcomed very, very like in a good way, in good shape. After that, they're gonna have the happening, the happens thing. The groom shall go to the, to the women wedding hall to have photo shoot together. And there you go, happily ever after story. <laughs> All right, enough with mind. Let's go to our capital. Let me just um, like introduce to you a moment. In our Islamic belief, we really respect the old people. We really respect them. And to show that, we kiss the back of their hands and their heads. So this tradition actually became the main Saudi tradition to show respecting older people for generations. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Hmm. <laughs> Second tradition. Oh my God. Did you all eat there? Yeah, did you like it? We really like it. It's a date with Arabic coffee. It's really a traditional thing to have uh, to have this and Arabic coffee together, and especially in occasions. Also, it's a sign used to gather the family member together inside the house, and also to show our generosity more and more. Some guests came to actually give them this, like we enter, like we give them the coffee and dates, but also. Want to be more fancy. So we set for him a feast. Only we to hear. Of course, as many of you people, we like to go shopping and cinema and so on. But there's something that we really like to do in the desert. We like to camp, which we call Keshta in Arabic. We don't also camp in desert, we camp in green valleys. Let me start with something everyone likes, food. I know you all guys like food. I see ya. <laughs> all right, let me start with, oh my God. <laughs> okay, Kabs is real famous in Saudi Arabia. It's really good, I cannot explain it more. It's just rice mixed up with Arabic spices, cooked very well with chicken or lamb meat or camel meat. Moving on to the second one, the second famous one, especially famous in the Medid region. We call it Mabouk. It's a dough mixed also with vegetables and Arabic spices. Cooked with lamb meat or camel meat. This guy likes it. <laughs> Moving on to the west side of Saudi Arabia, in Al Hijaz region, they are really famous with Salik. It's milk with rice. Let me show you the desert. Oh, sorry, desert. Whatever. <laughs> we have, we like. It. I always mix between these two. I like malasheed, really. It's basically Saudi pancakes. It's really Saudi pancakes. I cannot explain it more. Finally, we have the game out. The game out is a dough fried and mixed with honey syrup. Especially served during the Ramadan period. It's really awesome, and you're gonna try it later. The culture is so huge, and due to time limitation, I cannot explain it all. So I'll just leave you with this short video clip.
trabalho. Hubbel. يضيف إلى الديار ديار Assalamu alaikum wa barakatuh. Okay, my name is Khalid Al Harbi, and uh, now that my friends have talked about the culture, the geography, the history of the land of Saudi Arabia, God, we even told you about the food. Let's talk a bit about why you would want to go to Saudi Arabia, tourism. So, starting with religious sites, I'm sure that most of you have seen pictures of Mecca before. Uh, it's the holiest city in Islam, the birthplace of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam and the, where he grew up. It contains the holy mosque and Mr. al Haram. It surrounds the Kaaba, which every Muslim turns to five times a day when they pray. al Madinah, uh, the second holiest city in Islam. At the heart city, at the city of the heart, <laughs> at the heart of the city, contains, uh, is the al Masjid al-Nabawi, or the uh, Prophet's mosque. Within its walls is contained the uh, contained his house. Hajj. Every Muslim is obligated to perform Hajj at least once in their life. Um, the event is you know it gets really crowded. This picture doesn't really give it justice, but the efforts made by the Saudi Arabian government and the volunteers have really been impressive, and the uh, and it the, they keep impressing us every year. Now moving on to the uh, to the heritage sites, the religious of the Tinusca. There are five uh, currently, and we have plans to at least double them by the year 2030. I'm going to talk about the Madan Saleh at Dil'iya, historic Jeddah, and Al Ahsa Oasis in the Eastern Province. That's where I'm from, by the way. Okay, Madan Saleh, as explained by my friend Abdul Karim, there lived the tribe of Thamud 3,000 years before the Common Era. Uh, it's the first Saudi heritage site to be uh, registered with UNESCO, with UNESCO in 2008. Its importance lies in the fact that it was, it's been preserved for 5,000 years, pass, passing through the Lehian era, the Abbatian era, and the Roman era, and all the empires that followed, giving, providing us with a picture of how the Nabatean lifestyle was. Historic Jeddah. The houses, the houses still look there, by the way. They look, they look like this, by the way. They're amazing. Even this is a picture from them inside. They, they were established as a, as a major uh, uh, Indian Ocean uh, port for trading routes and channeling goods to Mecca. It also served as a gateway for the Muslim pilgrims who arrived by sea. Al-Aqsa Oasis is a city of property comprising gardens, Springs, canals, wells, and a drainage lake, as well as historical buildings, urban fabric, and archaeological sites. They, repre they represent traces of continued human settlement in the Gulf region. It contains two and a half million uh, uh, date palms, and is considered to be the largest oasis in the world. At Dir'iya, in Riyadh, the capital of Saudi Arabia, by the way, don't forget that, uh, it's the hometown of the royal family. And this is how it looks, it's pretty nice. Jazam Mountains, Asir Mountains, Farasan Islands, you definitely want to go there. <laughs> and beach resorts on the east and west uh, coasts. They're very great. You know, just as you guys think we're rich, we have great resorts there. The Hidden Canyon in Riyadh, and of course also the edge of the world in Riyadh. 
Now, this is not it for the tourism there. It, it, we still have a lot of plans to improve the tourism in Saudi Arabia. So some of, them, some of those uh, plans are already in motion today. Let's look, at the, uh, let's look at the Red Sea project, for example. Saudi Arabians see the future, how, what we aim to be. I'm going to talk a bit, introduce you to the uh, Saudi Arabian 2030 vision. And I'm going to talk a bit about Neom and show you a picture, a video towards the end. So the vision itself is a plan to reduce the dependency on oil, so that oil isn't the only thing you think about when you hear Saudi Arabia again, and, and diversify the economy, and improve uh, uh, public service sectors such as Health, education, infrastructure, recreation, and of course tourism. The vision is based on three strong pillars. Our heart as the Islamic and, and Arab worlds. Our devotion to become, or determination to, became, to become a global investment powerhouse. And our strategic geographic position that connects three different continents. Asia, Africa, and Europe. Highlighting some of its goals. Uh, we'd love to, we were aiming, of course, to continue the enlargement of the two holy mosques, to increase the uh, women participation of, uh, in the workforce, to decrease the rate of unemployment, in, in talking about education, to have at least five uh, universities to be considered among the top 200 ranked you know, international universities around the world, and of course to enlarge our economy to be the 50th largest economy in the world. Neon the largest Saudi Arabian project yet, 
The name came from the from the, uh, combining the Latin word neo, which means new, with the first let, uh, letter from the Arabic word mustaqbal, which means future, hence neo. Neo is considered to be in the center of the world. So 70% of the world's population can reach the neo within eight hours or less. I wouldn't do it justice talking about it. So hear, hear about it from the crown prince himself in this video. to distribute and that's going on to that's going to be good by answering a few questions that's going to be asked by my colleague from uh, Reem from the UAE and that's a different country by the way guys <laughs> hello everyone so now let's get started with the questions Question number one. What is the capital city of Saudi Arabia? Wow. <laughs> That's right. Question number two. Who is the present king of Saudi Arabia? traditional custom for men.
Name the most famous Saudi Arabian dish. Kafsa? Which phrase in Arabic means thank you? Now we will have the Saudi performance Alda. We're supposed to have the real swords, the Saudi ones, but we couldn't find, so these are samurai swords. <laughs> Enjoy. Anyone who wants to participate in the middle of the performance can do. Yeah, he will get a, a gift.
can we know all the people who participated in our performance to, to receive the gift? Yeah. Come up on the stage. Whoever participated in the Thank you all for listening. Uh, I hope by now you had a small glance, I can say, like, about what Saudi Arabia is. Uh, again, thank you all for coming. Uh, now you're welcome to have dinner. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you too, brother. Guys, guys, I just want to tell you one little thing. Next guys, one is on the 16th of November, so not the next Thursday, and not the next Thursday after this, the Friday, which that many of you will come on Thursday and find no one and then we are going to come on Friday.